Hello. <clears throat> Happy Sunday, you guys. I am pumped to be here. I was going to sign into here just to make sure that I can see comments. So we'll find out. Um, say hi when you hop on. Um, I'm not going to stay on too long. I mean, I'm not going to wait too long because I want to be respectful of everybody's time um, because I know that it's a Sunday night and things get crazy. Hi, Sharice. Hi, Norma. Hi, Jamie. Um, I know that this is a crazy time for people. Um, I'm in the West Coast right now and it's like can be dinner time and stuff. So hi, Molly. Hi, you guys. Oh, I'm so excited. It's like my friends. Hi. Uh, that's what I feel like when I do these trainings is that it's like my friends. Um, thank you, Norma. I love you. Okay. Um, so I'm wearing fun earrings again because <laughs> y'all liked my earrings so much on my introduction post. So I'm like, I'll wear my fun earrings again because that's always a good time, right? Um, hi, Heather. So, hi everyone. I am Brianna Engel. Um, my thing says Brianna Caitlin, but uh, I'm Brianna Engel and I'm a superstar director with Sense of Dreamers and I am just thrilled to be here. And so, if you read my introduction post, yay. <laughs> um, I have been looking forward to this all month long um, because I've just been thinking that this training is so fitting for me, the season that I'm in, and I think the season that we're all in as far as um, what we really need in our business, what's going to push us forward. Um, you know, 2020 was, for the most part, a really great year in sales, and maybe you've seen that um, decrease or you've seen it kind of remain steady or whatever, but leadership is like where it is at. And so um, I'm so glad that we're diving in into that into that tonight. And so I've really been thinking about what am I going to talk about? What does leadership look like? What's the road to leadership? And um, it's a bumpy one. Like I said in my introduction, like it's a bumpy one. But if you say the course and you hang on, it's worth it. It's 100% worth it. And it's not all just fun. Um, there are some things that we have to work through and grow through, but it is um, really rewarding to be a part of um, the leadership part of Sensi, and I'm going to kind of go through why. So again, thanks for hopping on, you guys. I appreciate y'all being here so much. If you didn't read my introduction, I'm Brianna Engel, Superstar Director since 2020, um, and I'm a mom of three. I've stayed at home with my kids. My oldest is nine years old. And, um, that has been my greatest joy. Um, but then since he came along in 2017 and when I was looking for something to do other than just be a mom and it was just the perfect time for me. And, um, I just wanted to do it to have something fun to do. And it ended up changing my life. Like quite literally, like you can go back and read my thing. I don't want to go through all of it, but it literally has changed my life. Um, and I'm just so grateful for that. And, um, I really believe that me selling the products is the easy part because I love it so much. I love the products. I love taking pictures. I love having fun with Sensi and um, my customers. And I feel like I do really well at customer service and things like that. But the hard part is the leadership part, right? Um, because if you haven't been in, you know, corporate America and experienced a CEO type relationship or things like that, it may be scary to walk into this relationship um, or walk into this kind of setting where you're asked to become a leader and you're a leader as soon as you sponsor someone and things like that. So um, I, again, so grateful to be able to do this um, with you guys and here. So if you have any questions, of course, feel free to answer them. I But I really can't look at comments or else I will squirrel all my way through this and I already talk too much. So um, I'm gonna dive right in, you guys. And again, I will go back and answer answer comments um, after this and feel free to message me if you need anything else, okay? So um, I'm gonna start out with, because I'm big into words and I'm also big into definitions. And so um, as I was thinking about this, I wanted to know how the dictionary defines leadership, okay? So I wanted to share that with you so you can just kind of like 
let it soak in a little bit and just kind of have that in the back of your mind. Um, the definition of leadership is the leading of people or an organization. Okay. It seems pretty simple, right? But, but it's that word leading and what does that look like? And, um, I'm going to be really upfront with you. I think that leadership and being a leader, um, looks different depending on who you are, who you're, um, leading, right? Um, if we're leading people or an organization, that's going to look different. And so, um, I think we have to be really, um, cognitive of that. We have to really recognize what are we doing? What's our purpose? What's our end goal? Um, and who are we leading and who are we, right? Because that's why, um, you know, if you go to the director page or if you look at any of the leaders in Sensi, um, even all the way to the home office, right? Dan being the president of um, Sensi right now, all of those leaders look so different. And it's because um, what drives them is different. Their goals, their dreams, their aspirations, their visions, all of that is different. And that's what makes Sensi such a great community is because our um, community is made up of different types of leaders and even leaders that are without the leadership title, right? Okay, so um, we have certified and essential consultants who are leaders, but they just don't have that title yet. And we're gonna dive right into how do we get to a leadership title? How do we become a leader? And it starts with you. It starts with acting um, as though you already are one, right? Um, I tell my essential and certified consultants, um, I'm sure you've heard it before, but start acting like a leader now and show up dressed for the part that you want. Show up for the job that you want early on, right? Um, if you want to be a leader, then I highly recommend that you start paying attention to the leaders in the room or the leaders around you or the people that you admire, who you feel like have qualities that are really admirable. Um, I highly recommend you taking a good look at what they're doing and not imitate, but absorb it and make it your own right? Um, put out something that looks different, but that is, um, that gives the same feeling, right? I like that idea of replicating something, but having it not be an exact, um, imitation of what I took, but instead giving similar feelings. Okay. So I want to be my own kind of leader, but I want it to feel like when I look at, um, you know, this leader, how she makes me feel, right? Um, so even as an essential and certified consultant, you can absolutely take that on and start looking at maybe it's your sponsor, or, uh, maybe it's your SSD, maybe it's your star director, or heck, maybe it's the person that you signed up under and they're a lead consultant now, right? Um, any, any form of what you feel like is a leader, what you look like, what you look at and those qualities that you love about them, you absolutely should be looking at that and thinking about how can I start showing up and making people feel like that person makes me feel, right? I think that that is so key. Um, the other thing about how we become a leader is we do things that leaders do, right? And so I don't know who originally said this, but man, if it doesn't like, to me, this just 100% is um, the focal point of leadership in my opinion and um it just sticks with me and it's i'm sure you guys have heard it uh the saying when you know the way you go the way and then you show the way right and to me that that really represents leadership and that re represents our sensi journey when you're looking at leadership being a goal and um you know you have visions beyond that but what does it look like to start as an essential consultant, right? You're learning things. You, you're, you're a baby consultant and you're figuring out the workstation and you're figuring out um, the, com the uh, compensation plan and you're figuring out the catalog and how to take orders and how to be um, a really great, how to give really great customer service and things like that. And so you're starting to know the way. And in that process, you're starting to recognize qualities about the people around you that you really love, things about your sponsor that you really admire, things um, that other leaders are doing or other consultants are doing. And you're like, I love that. I want to implement that in my business, right? And so you start to gain knowledge and you start to fill your heart and your mind with these things that people are doing. And it's just firing you up, 
right? And so when we know the way, when we get comfortable in our business, when we get comfortable taking orders from our customers and doing the things that drive our business forward um, it, from a PRV standpoint, um, from a day-to-day -day basis standpoint, you know, taking pictures of our products and, and doing all of those things, we know the way, right? And that's a really fun place to be at. And sometimes for people, it's a really hard place to be at because that's where we plateau. That's where we say, okay, now I know what I'm doing. I've gotten the sales. I've hit my shooting star. I've hit my sensational start. Now what do I do, right? And I think the interesting thing is that's the point where you should start um, to show the way. And I kind of, I kind of missed the go the way, but when you, when you figure out what you're doing, you, you start doing it, right? When you figure out what you need to do, you start doing it. In this business, there's no time for just take it in the beginning. There's no time for just taking it in. You have to take it in and then you have to move, right? So when we're starting at the bottom, that's what it takes. And as a leader, you're going to replicate this same process when you're looking at your, when you're looking at leaders in this business who you admire and who you love and who you um, think have qualities that really represent good leadership. You start to pick up on what, what they know and you soak it in, right? And then you start to do it. You start to um, process it and um, put it, put it into action, right? Um, and then you show others how to do the same thing. And so when you're a baby consultant and you're figuring everything out and you're going the way, that little part at the end, those three words at the end, the show the way is not, um, it's not necessarily showing your customers what you're doing, but instead it's showing people who you believe have what it takes to be a consultant. You're showing them, hey, you can do this, right? Hey, you would make a really great consultant. And when they step into that, you're showing them what you have learned prior, right? And it's this process. It's like this circle of knowing and then going and then showing, right? And I, to me, that is what leadership looks like. It is the constant repeat of things are ever changing, right? Um, I feel like social media and what we're doing in our business, what worked in 2020, we've had to kind of redo now, right? Not just with leadership, but just, excuse me, just in general, we've had to, um, we've had to relearn a lot of things. And um, I think it's really powerful for us to always be open to the idea that we're not going to stop learning how to do what we felt like in the beginning was basics, right? And we always talk about going back to basics, but sometimes those basis, basics have changed. They've evolved and that's always a good thing, but we have to be ready um, to relearn it to relearn it in a different way, right? So knowing the way and then going the way and then showing the way is the classic cycle of leadership, right? And it and it's the beginning cycle of a consultant. And so to me, that just represents leadership in its purest, most simplest form. If you wanna talk to somebody about how do they start to begin to sponsor, you can take them back to the circle that started it all, which was them becoming a consultant. And you say, what, what perpetuated you forward? What inspired you, right? How did you get to where you are? And you can even ask yourself those questions. Who were the five people who inspired you? What, what were you taking from their business and implementing in your own, right? We figure it out in that way. Um, I also say, when we're talking about how to become a leader, I said a little bit, recognize qualities that work for you and others that don't, but also be flexible. Right. And what I mean by that is that um, there have been a lot of leaders who I think do some incredible things and I try to take it on and I try to replicate it and change it and make it my own. And then I try to put it into action and it just doesn't work. And I get so, so hell bent <laughs> on um, trying to make this work because it worked for another leader. And I'm thinking this is what it takes to become a leader right? So I'm going to take this process. This is how I become a leader like this person is. I'm going to take this process. I'm going to do it. I'm going to implement it for my people or I, this is how I'm going to sponsor. And I try to do it and it doesn't work. And then I'm stuck and it's like you're spinning your wheels and you're like, what is going on? How come this thing won't move? She does it. We have to be flexible. We have to be flexible in this business all the time. Um, we cannot be so grounded in the things that other people are doing that we forget that we are free to move, 
And that's the beautiful part about this is that we get to so fluently move throughout this business and change um, change up what we're doing. We have to be flexible in that, right? So when you're looking at the qualities or the systems or the processes that other leaders are doing and you want to implement it and it doesn't work, just know that it's okay to be flexible. Just know that it's okay to bend it a little bit or to take a step back and say, you know what? This this doesn't work. It's okay. I'm, I'm just going to try something else. I'm going to come up with something different. And it's okay to be open to somebody else inspiring you. It's okay to um, take a good, long, hard look at yourself and figure out, okay, where, what, what can I come up with, right? Let your brain do the working. Get creative. And also on the flip side of that, one year, something that you think would never work for you, all of a sudden you're implementing the next year because things have changed. And we're going back to basics and all of a sudden the basics have changed. <laughs> and so what didn't work for us before is going to work for us now. And we have to be flexible enough to recognize that that's okay. Because leaders are flexible. Leaders are not steadfast in the systems that got them there. That they, they recognize that it's not going to keep them there. Right? And we talk about that in leadership. And, and I, I don't know the variety of like, titles of consultants here with me tonight. But, um, you know, we talk about like when you promote to director, the team that gets you to um, that leadership title or beyond is not going to be the team that keeps you there. So if you haven't heard that before, that little tip is for free. Um, but it's true. It's true. And the same can be said for your business practices or the systems that you started out with when you were a certified consultant. Those systems are, are going to be the systems that started you, but they're, they're not going to be the systems that you're doing when you're a superstar director. They're going to be ever changing. Okay. And you have to be flexible with that. You have to be flexible enough to recognize that growth mindset is one of the most powerful tools in your tool belt. It is one of the most powerful tools that you have is a growth mindset, the ability to be flexible and to relearn and learn and relearn again. Okay, so um, moving on. Oh, well, let me be very, very basic. How we become a leader, we sponsor. We sponsor and it only takes one person. Okay, so if you are an essential consultant right now and you're like, how do I become a leader? First of all, you know, the it's the leader title that I think that we get caught up on trying to chase. Um, but like I said in the beginning, I think that leadership is not what we are doing necessarily, but it's who we are. And you can be a leader and not have a team. Okay, um, I feel like that I had really strong leadership qualities that I've had to be very flexible about now. But I feel like I did have very strong leadership qualities because of that Enneagram 3. And um, way before I ever had a team. Way before I ever recruited anybody. Right? So it's not just what we do, but it's who we are. It's the qualities that we have. It's the skill sets. It's, it's the mindset. Right? It's not just what we're doing. It's not just what we're producing, but it's who we are. You have to be a leader here before you ever produce anything um, that represents a big paycheck or a title. And that and the beautiful best part about that, you guys, is you may be like, well, I'm not that I'm not a leader. I can never be a leader because I don't feel it here. Becoming a leader is a skill set and skills, meaning that you can learn it. This is all, this entire business, leadership and all, is all figure it outable. You can figure it out. You can figure it out. You can learn. You can be trained. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what dog thinks that it can't learn new tricks. You can be trained to be a leader. But having that growth mindset, being able to be flexible, knowing your vision, knowing what motivates you, knowing what inspires you. And I think very simply, knowing the way, going the way, and showing the way is what produces that leadership heart, that leadership mindset, the ability to be generous with others, right? But steadfast in your beliefs of who you are, being comfortable with who you are, right? Because I'm about to go into the downfalls. And I got to tell you all, I... um 
I, the, the downfalls that I talk about have been some of the most difficult moments, I think, for me overall um, since joining Sensi because I did not realize how thin my skin was until I joined Sensi. I thought I had a thick skin, <laughs> um, but what's really cool is that leadership does teach you things about yourself that may be painful for a little bit, um, but that's, that is truly what grows us right? It's like, the, it's like um, you know, if we have farmers or people who are into agriculture or gardening, you recognize that there's pruning to be done so that growth can happen, right? The caterpillar goes through a very, very painful process when he sheds his cocoon and turns into a butterfly. It's not, it's not just like a deep sleep and all of a sudden they wake up and it's beautiful. It's, it's a painful process of pruning and learning and figuring out who you are and being steadfast in that and knowing your grounds and, and really having your eyes on the vision of what you want and who you are. It is so important. And, and that's all already there. You guys already have that. You don't have to work on that. But let me tell you, if you, if you forget or you're not 100% sure, I want you to know that this business or any type of leadership role will test that. And um, that's where leadership can be painful. And that's where I think a lot of leaders take a step back and go, whoa, I didn't sign up for this. This was supposed to be all wax bars and warmers. Why does it feel like it hurts? Why does it feel like this is not fun? Okay, because I don't think that leadership is meant to be all fun or else growth wouldn't happen, right? We can't sit at the mountaintop. We have to go through the valleys, okay? And that's hard. That's hard for some of us to hear. Trust me, I, I, I didn't want to hear it and I definitely didn't want to experience it. But I can tell you now that it was, while painful, it was the most wonderful process because it has taught me who I am and who I am not. And that's my favorite part. That's my favorite part because it has taught me who I am not. And so in that, the downfalls of leadership, okay? Because um, I told y'all, the road is bumpy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, none of us like potholes because they uh, damage our cars, right? They damage us. And uh, the thing about leadership is that you can't let it do that to you. You can't let it keep you broken down on the side of the road. You have to fix yourself. You have to figure it out. And you have to keep moving. Okay. So one of the things that I learned about leadership, one of the bumps in the road per se, is, um, you know, intention is not the same as a perceived action. And what I mean by that is you can intend to lead well, but how others perceive your leadership may not match, right? There are a lot of things that I've done in my business as a leader where I had the best of intentions, right? I have set forth systems. I have had conversations. I have done things. I put things in place because I thought that it was the best thing for my teammates. I thought it was the best thing for my friends and I was shocked to my core the first time somebody said, I don't, I don't agree with you. I don't like it. I'm not doing it. I'm ghosting you. Well, they didn't say that, but I got ghosted, right? I'm not answering you. You can have the best of intentions and have people still not perceive it well. Okay. And perception is reality. And it may suck being on the receiving end of that, but we can all agree that to be true, right? That's why two people standing in the same room can experience the same circumstance, but have two different realities about it, have two different truths about how it went down because perception is reality. And that's hard. <laughs> that's hard for me because I like to be in control. I don't know. I, I may be alone in this, but if I am, y'all are lying. <laughs> uh, but I like to be in control. Um, and so leadership is hard because it, it, I'm not the only one in control, right? Uh, we're not meant to necessarily have the control. We're meant to show the way, right? And showing the way is different than dragging people down the road with us, right? We have to show people the way. We have to say, this is what I've done. You can do it too. Or you can do something different. That's hard. 
That's hard for me. Okay. So, um, I'm big into perception and I don't want people to perceive that my intentions were wrong or perceive that I, um, didn't mean well. Right. I'm like, hello, don't you see my heart? Don't you see that I want the best for you? Don't you see that I know what I'm doing? And all of a sudden I find myself on the receiving end of a lot of hurt. Um, because I didn't recognize that their perception of my leadership was not what they wanted at all. And that goes back to uh, the next point. Not everyone is going to like you. <laughs> Some of y'all maybe already figured this out um, very early in your Sensi journey. Um, and, I, and, I, and I mean that because you may have started this thinking that you were going to have a lot of support. You are going to have your friends and your family come out of the woodworks and support you and buy the products and, and share your business and give you referrals and stuff. And you may have gotten a lot of cold shoulders, a lot of ghosts, a lot of no contact. And that sucks. Okay. And it hurts. It hurts the first few times that it happens. We are not meant to be everybody's cup of tea. We're just not. Okay. We're not tacos. Not everybody's going to love us. So learning to be okay with that, for me, took time. Some people may have, a like I said, this to me is about thicker skin. And so I'm speaking from experience. Because again, leadership, I think, looks different. And so um, for me and, and where I came from and who I am, that part was really hard for me. Because um, I want everybody to like me. Who doesn't, right? Um, my life doesn't depend on everybody liking me, but I dang sure want people to like me. And so when all of a sudden people who I've sponsored or people on my team don't like me, and sometimes I don't even get a reason, that sucks. That hurts. That's painful. And I don't love it. And you won't either. And it's going to hurt. All of this grows the thick skin that I think is required. And it's not, hear me when I tell you, thick skin and a hard heart are not the same thing. A thick skin and a hard heart are not the same thing. I don't want your heart to change. I want your skin to get a little bit thicker, right? Because if my skin is thick, it's not gonna touch my heart. Right? Because my heart knows who I am. My heart knows my intentions. And I can, I can hear what you're telling me about what you perceived. And I can take notice of that for next time. But I'm going to be a little bit thicker. So it's not going to bother me. Because I used to get real down and out about what I thought people thought about me. Until I remembered what Dr. Phil has told me for years. What people say about you is none of your business. What people think about you, you wouldn't, no, this is what he says. You wouldn't worry so much about what people think about you if you knew how seldom they did. I love that. I love that. And that's not, and that's not to be rude or anything. I, I'm sure people think about you and I'm sure people talk about you and I'm sure a lot of it is great, right? But when we get down on ourselves and we start thinking about what are we doing wrong as a leader, specifically in this business, and we spend so much time focusing on that, it can drag us down and we're spending more time trying to fix things that are not ours to fix instead of moving forward and continuing to show people who want to be there instead of showing them the way. That's what we should be focused on, right? And so these things, while they're painful, I think about it's just my skin growing thicker, right? And I take lessons from it. And I try to understand it, but then I move on, right? Ask yourself, what's the lesson in this pain? If the end result is my skin getting thicker, that's great. But what is the lesson? What can I take from this and continue to move on? Because again, as leaders, we need to have a growth mindset. We need to have a growth mindset. We need to be flexible. We need to be able to accept constructive criticism, but also remember who we are, right? Because that heart, nobody, nobody's getting to that with their meanness, right? The first one hurts. And the first person who um, 
the first person who you sponsor who is really motivated and then you get all excited and you start talking to them and then as soon as they um, hit the join button, they ghost you. That hurts, okay? That sucks. <laughs> That's not fun, okay? The first leader you have that falls off, that hurts. The first person that dislikes you, it hurts, okay? You're gonna have a lot of firsts in this business and a lot of them, I would say majority of them are going to be so incredibly positive that they make an impact on your life that is the reason that you go out and tell people about Sensi, right? My first cruise happened with Sensi. My first Disney World vacation happened because of Sensi. Me buying our first house is happening because of Sensi. A lot of my most amazing first happened because of Sensi. First in my life. But also, a lot of the things that I can look at and say, that was kind of painful. It happened here in Sensi too. Where I feel like I was downright lied to. I feel like I got catfished and I was waiting for Neve to show up. Happened because of Sensi. That doesn't make the business bad. That doesn't make people bad. That makes people human and us able to sit back and say, I can learn from this. And this is, this is what leadership, this is what being in a community means, right? Because it's not just going to be rainbows and butterflies. And it's not going to smell that good either. Okay, rainbows and butterflies smells amazing. Okay, so the downfalls of this business, and when my leaders come to me and tell me, you know, she was really excited about this business in the beginning, and then all of a sudden I'm not hearing from her, and she's not doing anything, and she's not putting in the work, and, and I promoted because of her, and now I'm not getting paid a title, and, and my team just won't do what I want them to do. What I hear is pain and the hurt feelings, because your vision and what you saw and what other people may have spoke into isn't coming true because they really weren't in it, right? And as a leader, we have to recognize the reality that sometimes words and actions just don't match, right? And that's why we tell people, walk with the walkers and run with the runners, right? So when you, when you start this business and you start sponsoring people and you start stepping into that leadership role and you start getting your groove, you'll recognize that for every 10 people you sponsor, you're going to have one people who wants to run with you. Who will say, I hit that join button. I've already watched the videos. I've already got my VIP up. I've, I'm ready to go. What's next? Is there anything after Sensational Level 3? What else can I be working towards? Right? One out of 10 people. That's a lot of people you're going to have to sponsor. And, and that may be a lot of hurt. But if you know that this is possible, if you know that the downfalls are possible, what can you be doing now to set yourself up where you are not sitting on the side of the road with a flat tire asking yourself, how did I get here? You can tell yourself, I know this is gonna happen, but I also know that there are runners out there who will see the vision, who will see me showing the way and get excited. And sometimes you guys, it is backwards. Sometimes you do have walkers who all of a sudden wake up from their deep sleep and say, nope, I want it too. And you can't discount them. You can't discount them. You can't write them off. You can keep them in your back pocket until otherwise noted, right? Which is basically until they fall off as a consultant. You keep them in your back pocket. You continue to give them access to you showing the way. It is just not as intentional or one-on-one -on -one as you would with your runners. Leaders, you need to be giving access to your entire team of the things that you are doing, of the vision, because you never know what will strike somebody. You never know what is going to get to somebody's heart, right? You never know what is going to penetrate their thick skin because a lot of the time what I find with people, especially walkers or especially people who come into this business and then are like seem guarded or jaded, it's because other things have hurt them. Other direct sale businesses, other people, they've been burned. Their, their skin is so thick. But you never know what showing the way, what you showing them could penetrate their heart. 
And then all of a sudden, they go from a sleepy days, barely even crawling, probably don't even know how to walk. All of a sudden, they're up and running. You just don't know. Leaders, give access to every single person you sponsor the ability to see you showing the way. I can't remember what leader said it, but they were talking about how the visual, and I'm a visual person. I don't know if y'all can tell, um, but they gave the visual of sitting in a dark theater and you on the screen, right? There's a big your movie screen and you're on it and you're showing the way you're doing the things you're presenting them with the opportunity, right? Cause that's our job. That, that is as far as our job goes, that's showing the way, but presenting the opportunity. Here's the opportunity. And I'm going to talk about this down here. We want longer tables, right? We're going to make a seat at the table for everyone. And I'll give you the food, but I can't feed you, right? So the screen is on and you're presenting the opportunity. The doors are open. Everybody can sit down. But because it's dark in that theater, you have no idea whose eyes are open. But if you're giving them access to being able to see you, to hear you, and to, to hear what you have to say, you have no idea what will wake them up. The downfalls are not meant to keep you on the side of the road. These these potholes, these pitfalls, these these hurtful things that you will that you will experience as a leader are not meant to keep you broken down on the side of the road. They are meant to make you stronger and a better leader. Um how do we become the best leader? How do we become the best leader? First of all, we recognize that becoming the best leader is only defined by our own measurement of what that looks like. Okay? Because trust me, I know comparison is a a nasty little thing, okay? It is it is that little voice inside your head that says you're not doing good enough. Look at her, look at that person, look at that highlight reel. Look at that SSD. Look how fast she got there. Look what she's doing. Look how many people she recruited this month. We need to wake up and get rid of the imposter syndrome that lives inside us all. Okay. We need to cage it up. And we need to recognize that we become the best leaders by our own measurement. What does that look like? When you say, I want to become my own best leader to my team, what does that look like? What qualities am I emulating? How do I want to make people feel? And you can, I kid you not, you can come up with some amazing systems and game plans by just asking yourself, how do I want to make people feel? Now, again, feelings have no intellect, okay? Um, so it's not going to drive people necessarily to do magical things. Um, and even if we have good intentions about how we want to make people feel, they can still take it wrong. Okay. So just know that there's limitations in that. But how do we want to make people feel? Because I can tell you what, my sponsor, and she's here. I love her. She's my best friend. My sponsor makes me feel like I'm the most special person ever. And she's done that from day one with me. And I know that she does it with other people too. I look at her and I say, I want to make people feel that way. I want to make people feel special. Like I see them. Don't we all just want to be seen? What would it mean to you if your superstar director texted you just now and say, hey girl, I see you. I see you doing your thing this month. I'm proud of you. Great job. Keep doing it. How would that make you feel? Would you wake up tomorrow feeling motivated? Would you want to be like, oh my God, okay, what do I do? I, I got to keep doing this because I love that text, right? How do I want to make people feel as a leader, right? And I'm, I, I can only be in control of that. 
That's all I'm in control of is my intention on how I can make them feel. And sometimes we have to look outside of our Sensi community to find that feeling, right? Because I hear a lot of upcoming leaders say, well, my sponsor, my sponsor doesn't care. My sponsor is non-existent. I don't hear from my sponsor. Okay, I'm sorry. You've experienced that pain, that downfall early on. That doesn't mean you can't become a good leader. That means you have to look outside of this community for a minute and find other people in the real world who make you feel motivated, who make you feel excited. Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's your best friend. Maybe it's your mom. Maybe it's your sister. Maybe it's your brother-in-law. My brother-in-law is one of my favorite people. He makes me feel special. My husband makes me feel special. My mom makes me feel special. So I look at them and go, what are they doing for me that I can replicate with my team? Right? Other things that you can do on becoming your best leader, because here's the thing, becoming your best leader is just showing up as your best self every day. And that's my favorite thing is we, we in this company live on core values that are authenticity, simplicity, and generosity. If you incorporate those three skills, those three qualities into your leadership, you will be one of the best leaders this world has ever seen. How are you making people? There's no way to be generous and people don't feel good about it. If they are on the receiving end of you being generous, you can't go wrong, right? If you are being simplistic in what you're doing, you're not only doing it for the healthiness of your own sanity, right? But you are showing other people that it does not have to be a complicated blah, 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 all this stuff. You can be a leader who it's, it's very simple. This is what you have to do. Be simple, be generous, and be authentic. How do you want people to feel after they have contact with you or they see your face on Facebook or they get a text message from you or an email from you? How do you want people to feel? If you live on those three core values that Sensi says, that's what we're about. And Sensi shows us that that's what they're about, right? You don't have to look any further than what Sensi is doing to recognize that this is tried and true. Showing up as your best authentic self is how you can become a good leader. I hope that's what you make. That's I hope that's what you measure yourself by. You don't have to be better than this SSD over here. You don't have to be better than this leader over here. You don't have to be better than your sponsor. You just have to be better than who you were yesterday. That's it. Be better than who you were yesterday. You are only in competition with you. With you. That's it. We have that voice in our head who says, no, you got to be in competition with that girl because look what, look what she's doing. But you don't. That voice does not control you. Other things you can do. Holding ourselves accountable. Yeah. Holding ourselves accountable. This is hard for people. It's hard for me sometimes. <laughs> I'm not great at it, right? But there are moments, a lot of moments, where us as leaders and in this business specifically, I don't have a boss, right? I, I, I don't have, I'm not a manager where I have somebody above me telling me, listen, you still got to get this done today. No, I can literally be a leader and slack and not care. But I recognize that if I hold myself accountable to the things in my business that I know are producing the outcomes that I want, that I have to be disciplined enough to say, this is a non-negotiable. This is what I have to do. There's no way around it. We have to, and, and the thing is, is that holding ourselves accountable is something that has to be practiced. And that's the only way we're going to get good at it. And that takes discipline. And, and that's not fun either. <laughs> like these things are not fun necessarily. But they produce the outcomes that you want. I don't care if your dream is to buy a house. I don't care if your dream is to have 50 extra dollars for a date night. I don't care if your dream is to be a millionaire one day or to just hit director or just hit SSD. I don't care what your dream is. You have to have discipline in order to get there. And discipline and holding yourself accountable are non-negotiables in this business and um, 
in life. In life, you have to have those qualities and, and it takes practice, okay? It takes practice. How else do we become a good leader or the best leader that we can be? Having a growth mindset. I've talked about this already. But being able to be flexible and um, being able to absorb new things so that we are constantly learning. I ask my leaders, what did you learn today? What's something new that you learned this week? Are you learning something new that is going to drive you personally forward? Because this isn't just a wax and warmer business. If you think this is just about wax and warmers, I'm so excited for what's ahead for you. Because you are going to learn, you are going to learn that this is a personal growth business disguised as a wax and warmer business. I know that to be fact. Why? Because I'm doing a leadership on, I mean, I'm doing a leadership. I'm doing a training on leadership. I'm not telling you how to sell a wax bar. I'm telling you how to be a leader. Or hopefully I'm inspiring you on thinking about how you can be a better leader. But talking about leadership, we're not talking about wax. This is personal growth stuff right here. And you have to be willing to open up your mind to your way is not the only way. Just like her way is not the only way. And something that you learned today could be obsolete tomorrow. Just like the iPhone I got three months ago is going to be old and rusty in two years. My battery is going to be dead in two years. It, it, that's just how it goes. We have to be willing to open up our minds to the new things every single day. And that's why it's beautiful that no two leaders can look alike because my skill set is different than your skill set. And what I bring to the table is different than what you bring to the table. And that's why we're better together. Truly, that is why we are better together. Because we can sit at the same table and all provide a different dish. And guess what, y'all? I'm bringing dessert because that's my favorite. How else can we become the, our best leader? Surrounding ourselves with other what we believe to be great leaders. Okay? We know that there's that saying, you shouldn't be the smartest person in the room. And you shouldn't, okay? Surround yourself with other people. I like to say like-minded people, but the fact of the matter is, is that I think that you are at your most powerful. And if your heart and mind is open, you are at your most powerful when you are in the room with people who do not think like you do. Put yourself in positions where you are not with other like-minded people so that you can grow and you can absorb and you can think about and you can process where they're coming from, right? Yeah, it's great to be with uh, like-minded people. And I think that we should do that too. I think that we should put ourselves in positions to be with like-minded people. But I'm going to encourage you to also be with non-like-minded people and have an open heart. And hear what they have to say, right? I went to SSD Summit this past fall, and I went by myself because I didn't. I I knew other SSDs, but I, we don't have another SSD on our team. So I went and I sat at tables where I knew no one, and I listened to what they had to say, and I heard things I had never heard before, and I had a. We had talked about systems that I had never even knew existed. And had I sat at the same tables and, and been afraid to walk into that room and sit at those tables, I would have never been able to grow my business the way I have in just six months. That's why events are so important. Essential to SSD, events across the board are so important because you put yourself in an optimal position to sit at tables where people are not like you, people are like you, people have different skill sets, people bring different things to the table, they're doing things differently or they're doing things similarly, but you get to take what is what feels right to you and you get to implement it in your business. And the worst thing that could happen is you say, you know what? That didn't work. Surround yourselves with other leaders. And I don't care if you're an essential consultant. Ask, do the coaching calls. Ask to do the calls with your leaders. 
Get on a coaching call with every single director on your team. Hear what other directors have to say. Hear what other leaders have to say. Surround yourself with other leaders. And remaining open. This is how we become our best leader. Like I said, we want longer tables, not higher fences, okay? But also recognize who desires to feed themselves and who wants to be spoon-fed because we're only here to present the opportunity and give them the food. It's their job to eat it. We have to remove the responsibility to want to lead the horse to water and force it to drink. We are not that powerful. We are not that kind of leader. We should not be that kind of leader where we are spoon feeding every single person that is not beneficial to you. It is not beneficial to your business and it is definitely not beneficial to the rest of the people who are watching you because what you are teaching them, what you are showing them is that this is what is required of leadership, that you have to spoon feed every single person at this table. And when you finally get to the end of the line, guess what? So-and-so sponsor another person, guess who's feeding them? And you are not going to have time to grow a business that produces any kind of outcome where you are reaching dreams, you are reaching goals. And that's why I say you have to know, you have to be steadfast in what your vision is for this journey. You have to be steadfast in it. And it's okay to say no. And it's okay to have boundaries. Listen to me clearly. There is not a CEO on this planet that would say, to the janitor, you can call me at 3 a.m. And it's, and it's not about titles, but the fact of the matter is, is we have to have boundaries. Why? Because systems are in place. Why? Because systems are what make our business in a working order. The boundaries are required. And if we don't set those up from the top down, the people who are rising up are going to think that anything goes. And the result of that is burnout. And the result of that is fallen leaders. Be cognitive when you are knowing the way, going the way, and showing the way of what boundaries you have in place, of what you are teaching people on how they can treat you, right? That, that's, I mean, if I haven't heard that a hundred times, right? We teach people how to treat us. Same for leadership. But you walking in the door, you know. You know what your boundaries are. Okay, I'm going to steer off a little bit. And I want to just touch on, and then I'm done, touch on the benefits of leadership in Sensi. Okay? Because I'm going to kind of bring it back to the Sensi world. Because you can use any of this stuff that I talked about in the real world. Right. If you're still working a nine to five, if you are in a leadership position, I hope that um, there's something here for you to grasp and and be able to take into whatever outside job or opportunity you may have that doesn't reflect uh, Sensi. But let me tell you that inside Sensi, when you become a leader and you step into a leadership position, there are so many opportunities. Um that provide greater insight, just like with what I was talking about with SSD Summit. An entirely different world. Director Boot Camp, Star Director Summit, SFR, um, focus groups, leadership bonuses, extra trainings and certifications, access to home office, right? When you step into leadership roles, you you start to realize that all these doors are, are just waiting for you to show up and knock and ring the doorbell and ask, can I come in, <laughs> right? All of these things, I, I love this. What all of these things do for your business is it provides you the opportunity to sit at other tables and to collaborate with other leaders and to hear and have an open mind. It is literally testing you in that situation saying, do you have a growth mindset? Are you willing to sit with an open heart and an open mind and hear what other people are doing and you speak into what your other people, what you're doing? 
right? Because it's not just a take, 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 right? As a leader, we need to be giving too. Orville says it best, give more than you take. So as a leader, that's an expectation, right? And I know that you're giving to your team, but there's other leaders in Sensi who need to hear what you have to say. And there is something really powerful about being part of a leadership um, a leadership group here in Sensi because of the connections and the camaraderie, right? The, the, the knowing that, hey, I may not be there right, right now, but I was, or I know I'm going to be there later. So can you tell me more about that? Or, hey, can you help me with this? This is really hard. You know, my skin's not that thick yet. And I just need help navigating what I do here. And like I said, all of this is just my, it's just my take on leadership. There are thousands of other consultants here who may tell you something completely different. And I hope that you listen to them. And I hope that you hear what they have to say. And if it sounds good and it fits right, I hope that you implement it. But that is the beauty of this business is the access to things like director boot camp, where you literally get to go to home office and you literally get to experience an in-person event where you are walking the hallways that Heidi and Orville dreamed about. And they said, when leaders walk through here, I want them to feel empowered by the knowledge that we are giving them so that they can step into this new role that feels big and scary, but we are empowering them with the knowledge and the know-how and, and joining hands with them, right? I feel like that that's what every home office type event does is that it solidifies that home office is literally joining hands with us again and again and again. And it's not that they ever let go of our hand, but they want to make sure that, hey, I've got you five fingers and all. I've got your hand. I'm walking through this with you. Home office has your back. And we just want to empower you. We just want to make sure that you know how incredible you are. And what you have to offer is worthy of other people hearing it. That access to home office is literally one of probably my top three favorite things about being a leader. Focus groups, leadership bonuses. Hey, who's not motivated by money? Let's be honest. I know this can be like a really uh, topic for people and I get it. I don't really love to talk about money either, but I love to make it. Amen. Right? So... Leadership bonuses. There is money on the table. If you weren't listening yet, there is money on the table. Picture it. A table full of money. And some of those bills have your name on it. Are you going to leave it there? Uh, and by the way, that starts when you are an essential consultant, because if you're not doing 2000 PRV a month, you are leaving money on the table with your name on it. Yeah, real money, <laughs> real, put it in your pocket in the gas tank money. I mean, I like it and hate it, but money makes the world go around. And that's just fact. And I think to a certain degree, money motivates everyone. Leadership bonuses are a real deal money in the bank opportunity. What are you doing with it? Summits, extra trainings, certifications, all of these things are just, to me, it's just the added perk of being in leadership. It's it's the it's the icing on the cake, right? Because to me, the foundation, the 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 actual meat and potatoes of this leadership thing is who I've become and who I am becoming. And, you know, I'm a mom, and one of the things that makes me the happiest is seeing my kids uh, go through their stages of life and all those things, but it's in those moments where they 
exert themselves in a situation where I see a little glimpse of who they may be when they get older, right? They do something that they thought they never could do before and they're super proud of themselves or they say the right thing. They show up with integrity, right? I've got a nine, seven and five year old. So we're talking on a very small scale, but they have those moments and I get a glimpse of who they may be when they get older or a glimpse into, okay, maybe I'm not doing such a terrible job. My kids aren't going to like wind up somewhere, you know, I don't want them to be. It's that same feeling when you step into leadership and you're sponsoring people and you're putting in the work and it's like blood and tears and you're staying up all night and you're worrying about them and you're dreaming about them and you're like, oh my gosh, is this, are, are they going to do it? Are they going to reach that promotion? Are they going to make that PRV this month? Are they, are they going to sell that extra cleaning bundle? And then they do it and you literally come unglued. And if you're not a parent yet and you experience this for the first time, you may think you're crazy. You may think you've lost your ever loving mind when you start to grow a team and you become so invested in what they're doing because they're showing up, they're working their business, they're doing the things. And you're like, holy cow, I'm so proud of you. Like I literally have gotten choked up over my teammates and I'm like, girl, I've never met you before, but I'm literally crying, right? Those moments, those moments that we, we have the, man, we have the honor to be a part of, that we get to share and celebrate with these people. There, there's just, there's no amount of money. There's nothing like it. And I did not know that that was going to be part of my story when I joined Sensi. Again, thought it was about wax and warmers. So the downfalls and the broken down cars and the, ooh, that hurt and the, and the tough skin and the thick skin and the, that almost penetrated my heart and, and I'm a little bit hurt by that. All that pales in comparison to knowing that I had a little sliver I had a little sliver of something to do with the success of somebody who literally sees the vision and is making their dreams come true because of this business. And if you are like a feel good, love when people, underdogs take over, you're a leader. You're a leader. There are so many different areas of leadership that are going to hit people differently, right? For some people, it's going to be the money. Some people, it's going to be the connections of leadership. Some people, it's going to be the benefits of leadership. Some people, it's going to be the personal growth opportunities. And the, and the cool part is, is you as a leader are in the position to be able to share that with others and help them get there too. And it's a powerful position to be in, but it's also a humbling one. So we need to keep ourselves accountable and keep ourselves in check, right? And make sure that we are stepping into that role, knowing exactly who we are and exactly what our intentions are and asking ourselves, how do I want to make other people feel? I love that because I am an underdog. I love that. So leadership can be complicated, okay? I say, I say simplicity, but leadership can be a complicated kind of ball we get to unravel. But as long as you stay sitting on the core values of who this company is, and you, and you really soak that in, meditate on it, and, and appreciate that we are a company that values simplicity, generosity, authenticity, you're golden. If every interaction you have with a teammate or your team or your group or people who may be there one day or the people around you, if you ask yourselves, how do I want them to feel after they leave this interaction? You're going to be a great leader. Yeah, there's a lot of details to be worked out. You'll figure it out. I hope that I gave you some tools in doing that, but just know 
that this is not the blueprint to leadership and it's not laminated. It is not set in stone, okay? It's like the sand. It can be... But to me, I poured my heart into this a little bit because I recognize that this to me is the story of leadership for me. This is the road of leadership for me. And it may not look the same for you, but I hope that you can create a similar roadmap for your leaders or the leaders around you. And if it looks different, that you're proud of that. Okay? So I am so thankful for all of you for hopping on tonight. And I appreciate each and every one of you. I will go back and read the comments and answer any questions if there are any. Um, but just know that I love you all. And I am cheering all of you on. No matter where you are at, I am cheering all of you on. So have a good night, you guys.